These are inflammatory. They create massive amounts of inflammation in your body. They will lead to disease in your body. So here are the eight fats you want to avoid as much as possible. They create more inflammation than smoking and sugar. Write them down. Here's the list of the ones you want to avoid. Canola oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, and sunflower oil, rice bran oil, and grape seed oil. I would also throw into the mix unrefined peanut oil. So we want to swap out those poofas with monounsaturated fats and saturated fats. Here are my favorite fats. Olive oil, real olive oil that's not cut. Avocado oil, not cut. Grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, duck fat, beef tallow, and good old-fashioned lard from healthy pigs. This video essentially stems around the hypothesis that dietary fats that are high in omega-6 fatty acids are inherently inflammatory. Therefore, we should replace any oils high in omega-6 fatty acids with ones high in saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, and some might postulate omega-3 fatty acids. I will say the first suggestion in this video of olive oil may actually be of benefit. Since inflammation is such a broad term and most people don't know what it actually means, the best way that we currently have to look at inflammation is to look at inflammatory biomarkers within the bloodstream, such as IL-6 and HSCRP. This study looked at diets containing high levels of olive oil, sunflower oil, or canola oil. They found that from week 0 to week 4, olive oil did indeed reduce inflammatory markers. However, sunflower oil, which is very high in omega-6 fatty acids, as well as canola oil, which is also high in omega-6 fatty acids, also had the same reduction in inflammatory markers, meaning that none of these, regardless of their omega-6 content, demonstrated any degree of being inflammatory. Another study looking at canola oil with or without added vitamin E found that both groups saw a drastic reduction in the inflammatory marker HSCRP in the eight-week study, once again seeing no evidence of any sort of inflammatory response. And now when we compare these omega-6 fatty acids with the saturated fats that were recommended in this video, if you enrich someone's diet with 50 grams of butter or 50 grams of one of the highest omega-6 oils, sunflower oil, the omega-6 rich meal was much more effective at decreasing inflammatory markers than the saturated fat meal. And another study comparing vegetable oil to butter found that the saturated fat condition tended to increase inflammatory markers, whereas the vegetable oil group tended to decrease inflammatory markers. The saturated fat group also saw an increase in liver fat, whereas the polyunsaturated vegetable oil group saw a decrease in liver fat. Essentially, we do not currently have support in humans that omega-6 fatty acids lead to inflammation. Meta-analyses indicate that over long-term and short-term trials, diets high in omega-6 fatty acids, which are typically coming from seed oils, do not increase inflammatory markers. Therefore, if we look at the most accurate picture of what inflammation would actually represent within the body, omega-6 fatty acids do not increase inflammatory markers or inflammatory indicators. And compared to many of the fats recommended in this video, not only may they provide improvements for blood lipids, reductions in insulin resistance, and reductions in liver fat, but they show superiority when it comes to inflammatory markers.